Welcome everyone to another Silicon Labs Talking Tech Podcast. You are in for a real treat today. This is actually our first episode in what we are starting, which is a new reoccurring security podcast series. The security is at the heart of all new IoT projects. Every customer we talk about is looking at how the security regulations and requirements are changing their projects. And so Silicon Labs, we're at the forefront at providing solutions to assist all these engineers with their problems and with their new projects. So every month, we're going to have a new security podcast to help all of you stay current with these challenges. In order to do that, this security podcast will include some of our brightest minds at Silicon Labs. That's right, Silicon Labs has our own security system engineers that will be our guests on these podcasts. That's right, we're going to be joined by Josh Norum and Arash Kamalapur. Thanks guys for joining us for the podcast. Oh, thanks, uh, we're super excited to be here. Hey there, Kyle, nice, nice to be here. Sure, so you guys are diving into all these security topics, you're taking time to research it, and then we're going to provide this to the customers and to the listeners. So we appreciate the time you guys are taking to bring these topics to the customers. Yeah, uh, we're, we're excited to actually be able to do that. Um, we, we know that there's a lot of information that's hard to process. And so we're excited to be able to actually take some of our expertise uh, and let, you know, not just internal people, but also our customers sort of access uh, how we've distilled down uh, some of the things we've taken a look into. So it's pretty exciting. Well, I gave you a big uh, introduction. Why don't you explain to the listeners what are our security system engineers focused on? What what is it that you do, and and what what value you're bringing to the Silicon Labs customer base? Yeah, um, well, security systems is a team dedicated to looking at security from a system level. As Silicon Labs has sort of gone through our security journey, we realize that a lot of the time security happens in the cracks. You take two pieces of hardware that are fine on their own and you put them together and you discover that there is some sort of you know security interaction there or two separate libraries that when you put them together interact with each other even functionally right you can get into a situation where maybe software thinks that software qa tested something and software qa thinks that software tested that thing in their unit test and nobody actually did it uh, so we spend a lot of time looking at how all of these pieces in a system interact and making sure the whole thing is secure and everything's working together properly. The other big thing that we do is sort of look at the landscape and help figure out how the company is supposed to engage with that. So for example, if our CEO uh, wakes up and reads a news article about some new you know, exploit on an IoT product and, and thinks to himself, you know, I wonder how that affects us or our customers. We're going to be the group that takes a look at that and sort of understands what systems is this really relevant to? What are reasonable ways to, to deal with the problem? How does it affect our software and products as Silicon Labs? And then how do we expect that to affect our customers and, and what they're doing? And, you know, what do we, so we can kick off that process uh, and start working through that. So those are sort of the two big roles uh, that we fill uh, in, in the company and what we're trying to achieve. Do you agree, Arash? Is that what your uh, primary role is? <laughs> yeah, certainly there's a lot of that uh, and uh, formalizing everything for the uh, implementation, for the requirements that we need uh, to give to other engineers so that they can follow uh, our, the guidance uh, and information that we, we find out about uh, all that all that research, all that, all that preparation. Well, that's great. Yeah. So what you and Josh said is, is right on target where there's just so much information out there about security, right? So having your team dedicated to looking at both the security capabilities of our individual components and how they go together, but then those threats and all those you know, uh, notices that are going out in the, in the press and, and how that all boils into to when people interact with Silicon Labs, that they know somebody's got their eye on it. But, you know, what are you trying to accomplish with the security podcast? I think it's a great idea. What would you like for our listeners to get out of having this, this monthly podcast on security? Yeah, I think one of the things that we see all the time is that 
you know, there's a lot of information out there. There's too much information. It's all very complicated. It's all very multidimensional. Uh, and, you know, as we work in the company, we, we struggle with, it's very reasonable to expect me to understand what's going on because I spend all day, every day doing nothing but security. Uh, but our designers and our marketing people, and we need to be able to let them understand the context of things and give them a, a simple way to deal with that um, so that they can make good decisions, right? And that's what we do a lot internally. And for me, that's what I want to do here for people outside the company. Um, we want to provide context and a basic understanding of the threats that are out there so that our customers or anybody who happens to be listening to the podcast uh, can have a little better understanding uh, and, and sort of figure out how they need to respond to that and whether it's even a problem, right? A lot of times things that sound most scary uh, for a particular system or a particular person might not actually be a problem at all. And being able to understand what needs your attention and what doesn't, uh, I think is is the first step in, you know, helping everybody do a better job with security. And it also, you know, there's some self-interest here as well. The better educated and the more uh, general people have an understanding of this stuff, the easier it is for me to communicate to them and to do my job and, and to, for us as a, um, you know, as a participant in ecosystems and in industry to, to make sure that we're doing the best job we can in security and that the IOT in general is secured and, and doesn't have uh, problems that could have been easily solved. So that's, that's exactly true. There's so much information out there. And I think the podcast will help people understand it. But one thing to be clear, Josh, you guys are focused on embedded devices. So what's the difference between, you know, understanding security and how it applies to our devices, which are, you know, those embedded devices, not what maybe people think of traditionally when they think of security? Yeah, um, embedded is hard. That's, that's the first thing to understand. And there's a, a number of reasons for that. Uh, the first is, you know, most of the time when we think about security, the first thing people think about are PCs and the web and, and that type of stuff. But that is all pretty homogenous. All PCs uh, follow the same patterns and use the same libraries and are running the same software. And there's a respect in which that is a very uniform problem. They also have effectively unlimited resources. And obviously, if you're a gamer, you don't think that's true. Uh, but for the purposes of security, PCs have effectively unlimited resources. And they've been under scrutiny for a long time. We've been tackling web security for a very long time. None of that is true for embedded devices. A light bulb has very different security capabilities and security needs than something like a Nest or an Alexa, then something like a door lock that might be sitting right next to that light bulb. You even get into situations where a light bulb in your house and a light bulb on your porch are different in terms of security. The physical access to those things are very different. There are many ecosystems, there are many ways of solving the same problem. So you're dealing with this very non-homogenous system that makes things more complicated. You're dealing with very limited resources. Hey, I have 128K of code space and 32K of RAM, and I'm supposed to run off a battery for 10 years. That places a lot of constraints on what you can do and what's reasonable and, and what's not. So it is a complicated thing and it is a hard thing to deal with. And if you're not specific about your language, if you're not clear about which portions of the IoT have an issue and which ones does this not apply to, then you know, your world is always very complicated and everything gets very difficult. So it's a very unique challenge and it's a new one because five years ago, no one was really caring about whether you could exploit a light bulb or not. And now we're seeing more and more devices in the IoT space that are more and more interesting to bad actors. Uh, and that we need to to protect against. So it's it's different and and it's it's a challenge. 
I just wanted to proc off of what Josh was saying. There are a few other things that you you know, don't realize when you're using IoT devices uh, oftentimes. They are a very implementation specific tied to a hardware platform that you know ages out or changes over time. There are revisions of what you think is one light bulb can be, there could be a number of different revisions that hardware um, differences uh, matter in the, in the context of what might be exploitable uh, from a, an attacker's point of view. Some of the software, it doesn't get updated. You know, there are a lot of vendors, they make the product, they let it go out there and then it just sits there. And, you know, it's, it's the longer it's out there, the more chance there is for somebody to find something. And of course, and this is something kind of, I think Josh alluded to is that these are connected to your home networks. So you've got situations where somebody could take control of one of these devices they sit quietly and then and then they're part of a botnet later on because of they're uh, they're they're connected to the internet they're using your 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 home resources so it, it's kind of crazy to think maybe your refrigerator is part of a, a coordinated effort to sniff out some something from your network and then or attack some server in some country or something yeah, Arash, that's right. And I think that's why our in, our listeners are going to be very interested in, in this series of securities because it it applies to everyone's smart home. It's something that they've all read in the news. Uh, but what both of you alluded to is it's so complex. It's it's these topics uh, of security are things that, you know, when you get to the heart of it, people don't understand uh, what is causing all these issues in security. So uh, do you guys think that you're going to be able to uh, break this down for the common listener, uh, for the non-experts? How, how do you think you're going to go about uh, helping them understand this in our, in our series podcasts moving forward? Yeah, I think there's some good news there. You don't need to have all of the details correct to make good decisions and understand what's important. I always think in, in terms of mental models. So as an example, we all live in Austin. And when lunchtime comes up, or at least, you know, when it did pre recent events, I pull up a map in my head, right? And it's made up of streets that run north and south and streets that run east and west and blocks that are all squares. And I use that to figure out what streets I'm going to go down to to get to where we're going to lunch. If I pull up the real map, none of that's true. None of those streets are actually north and south. They're, they're sort of a little off access and not every block is the same width, but it doesn't matter. My very simple map is enough for me to understand how to get from where I am to where I need to go to. The details about the fact that north isn't quite north and, and these streets are a little closer together than these others, those don't matter. And you can do the same thing with security despite its complexity. We can take and give ourselves mental models that aren't 100% correct, but are correct enough that if we're trying to figure out whether it applies to us, if we're trying to figure out how important it is, it's good enough to get the job done. And that lets you know people like me deal with the complexity and the, the actual how things are really working. And it lets everybody else live in a, a bit simpler space. Um, so that's what we're going to try to do here a lot. We're going to try to reduce things to easier to understand models that certainly someone, right, somebody can can come in and say, well, actually, blah, 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 because the model is not perfect, but it's good enough. It's going to get you to the right answer, despite its, its differences. And I think when we do that, we'll find that there are a lot of similarities, a lot of patterns. Sure, I have many devices operating in many different contexts, but I have one pattern that I can apply to a large set of them. And then the real trick is just understanding when that model applies and when it doesn't, but that's a much easier thing to do. We're dealing with a smaller number of models and we're dealing with one simple question. Is this valid? or in this context, or is this not? So the hope is that that kind of brings things down to a level where people who are listening to a short podcast, rather than spending hours and hours reading papers, can have an understanding of the context and can really understand what's important to them and what's not, and pick up on the right pieces of nuance and leave the irrelevant pieces of nuance behind to keep things simple. More succinctly, I think you can say that complexity is the enemy of security. If there are instances where you need to know a lot of little details and that these 
exceptions make for a more secure system, there might be a problem with that design. There might be something that has to be revisited because that ultimately is a, going to always be a sticking point. And as you add to that system and introduce more layers, you're going to have more complexity and that can only, that doesn't bode well for, for making something secure. So simplicity is our friend. Well, that's great. Like you guys said, security is super complex, but I think that these podcasts are really going to help everybody understand it. Um, between the research you guys have done and the way you're going to explain it to the listeners, I think it'll be great. So you guys, uh, this has been a great overview of what we're going to do with the security podcasts that we'll do uh, on a monthly basis. And we really appreciate the time you guys are putting into this. Super excited to get started and to talk about all sorts of things in the future. All right. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we plan to do the first security podcast uh, focused on glitching debug ports? Are you guys open to maybe coming back next week and we'll have the uh, glitching debug ports where you guys can start sharing this uh, deep in depth knowledge on security topics? Sounds good to me. Glad to see you next week. All right. Well, again, thanks for both of you for taking time to explain our security podcast and for our listeners. Uh, I hope you're excited for this new opportunity to learn more about Silicon Lab solutions, specifically focused on security. And until next time, everyone, take care. Mm-hmm.